Hey everyone, welcome to Smart Investing. So today's video is going to be about the banking sector. I know this past weekend it has been kind of crazy with the whole situation with the Silicon Valley Bank. I'm not here to talk about that, but again, we're just going to go over and continue the banking sector. So these are the five stocks that I have. We're going to start off from the bottom, work our way to the top. Uh, see if the company is actually okay or in a good position to continue to do business or not. So, first one up is Cash, C-A-S-H. That's the ticker symbol. So, it's at $46.14. Market cap is at 1.27. 52-week high and low. Earnings are 4.2. Dividend is at 0.2. So with the numbers, uh, they look okay. But given the situation and the circumstances that we're in with this bankruptcy from Silicon Valley, uh, a lot of people are nervous, not me, I mean in general on Wall Street and everything, that it might create a chain effect which would lead to more bankruptcies and, and other, you know, potentially hidden banks that are supposedly financially sound, like they're stable when they're really not. And you know, the government might just bail them out. So, I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I see bigger banks. The I mean, like, the top-end banks like J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, or Bank of America start buying out these banks. I would not be surprised. Uh, again, even in 2008, People aren't familiar with that uh, collapse because because around that time, the retail investors weren't around around that time. But if you were involved with it or somewhat knew about it, then you, you sort of know what a bad environment is. So with that said, with this whole bankruptcy, again, it might create a chain effect. And so... If a, if a bank is failing, should they fail or and be bankrupt and call it a day? Or should they be bailed out by, you know, the federal government or should they be bought out or something? Um, I really think that it makes no sense to bail out a bank if they're failing based on mismanagement. And certain circumstances in which, you know, they know and supposedly how to how to run a bank when in actuality, uh, this is already the second bank. The other one was Silver Gate Capital, but on top of that, uh it's even more risky, even though if this company C A S H is a good company. Uh, there's more risk on the table just because of what happened last week. But uh, we're still going to go over the numbers and find out and see what's going on. Let me close this door real quick. So, earnings are actually lower. And then for Q2, they've actually been raised. So I don't know how you go from under a dollar to close to two dollars on the earning estimates. That's pretty wild. And then we can see looking at the numbers, uh, they're doing okay. Looks like they're doing okay. Revenue is not showing me. 
So, obviously, again, a lot of these banks are high into debt. They raised their debt their highest within the last five years, which is even more insane. Now we have uh, cash flow, which in pretty much, it looks like, let's see, 270, so... 390 so what 80 million in cash cash flow positive but for a bank of that size close to 1.3 billion and 80 million in cash I guess they're doing okay but with the banking sector again uh even the, these smaller banks in the in the billions might have financial strain. The only news that I have for you is ticker symbol HSBC. So for that bank, they actually bought out a division of Silicon Valley Bank. So with Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, I don't know what was the purchase price or anything, but that ticker symbol, you can expect today for it to go up. Sorry, you can expect for it to go down temporarily because of the acquisition. And then if Silicon Valley Bank was still available, that ticker symbol would have went up. But again, since it's bankrupt, can't really raise money and now the proceeds are going to someone else so other than that with the banking sector again it's just putting a financial strain regardless of the decision that's made whether it gets bought out or whatever it's just not it's just not sound you know it's just not stable when something all of a sudden goes bankrupt and all of a sudden, you know, there's cash available. Things just don't work like that overnight, even though the Fed tries to do it, but still. So anyways, moving on. Quant ratings. So the highest rating, uh, funny number here, is the quality with the triple number 666. Uh, that's the highest number for the quant. So it says it has decent quality for this stock. And that's what it's best used for. And then let me look at the chart again. So for the last five years, it looks like it's been, I mean, up and down. I wouldn't say flat, but around the $40 mark. And then the past year, it's gone down and then gone up then it's gone down again here you can see within this past week uh thing, especially for the banks it hasn't been good uh the markets are closed as of right now they're going to open in a few minutes if you guys see that right there but um like i said the banks uh, are worried so moving on to the next one so as for cash hold on I didn't even give a final decision so as for cash given the circumstances and the overall numbers uh, I'm gonna give it a no decision leave it blank so basically I'm not saying it's bad or it's good. I'm just looking at, at it from a perspective where can this company stay alive? I think they'll do okay, but it's not meant for a watch list, obviously, given the circumstances. And I think it's only going to get worse because, again, I'm expecting a down year this year. Anyways, so obviously the bigger banks are the ones that are going to survive 
Next one up is UMBF, UMBF Financial. So UMBF Financial, you can see it's gone all the way down for the past year. Uh, ticker symbol UMBF. So again, market cap is at $3.74 billion. Uh, got that alert, as you can see. Market will open in five minutes. So we have here, earnings per share is at 8.86. Dividend is at 1.5, so not bad, actually. This bank, by the numbers, it looks like it'll definitely survive. 52-week high at 103, 52-week low at 75. P.E. ratio, 8.7. Looks like it's undervalued. You can see a really big drop. Look at that, another big drop from 90 bucks all the way to 77. That is not normal. So, again, even with that bankruptcy from... Silicon Valley Bank, you can see easily, based on that one-year chart, these banks are nervous. So, even though, what, like I said, whatever happened to that last decision for Silicon Valley Bank, whether it gets bailed out or not, somebody takes it over, buys it out, whatever, a foreign country, whatever, uh, buys shares in cash, whatever, in cash or whatever, uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg. So... Uh, I see a bunch more failing and you could only do so much where you can bail out so much and do so much where everything becomes chaotic and you're just throwing money at the situation and, and borrowing and borrowing. And um, eventually, uh, if this continues, uh, I hate to say it, but we're looking at a depression, <laughs> whether whether we like it or not based on government decisions so moving on from that uh the charting again uh i don't like it at all you see from the five year it's held up from the 2020 highs and then this 2023 well most of this is 2022 but as you can see it's gone down and it took a sharp leg up then it's gone down again then up but look at this drop look at these big drops i mean just straight down like you can see a bunch of them here like this one um this one's not too bad i wouldn't consider this one because this one went up straight up the same way but again you have this really long long drop then another one here, this really long drop. And then you see this last one over here, that really long drop. So we have three long drops. Uh, and, and it looks pretty bad. Looks really, really bad. Uh, based on that chart, um, and even this analysis for the analyst ratings, they gave it a hold 80% and a 20% buy. Uh, we we'll want to look at the quants and see what's the highest rating here. So basically, what's the best strategy for this is quality. They rated quality close to a 7. So we have a 7 rating. And then we want to see the dividends real quick. Uh, the financials. So they're on target. They raised it a little bit then. It's about the same expectations from the last estimates. So now we want to look at some indicators here, some key fundamental indicators. I like to look at the annual because it's more accurate. It's not showing me. So I'm going to open the page again. I apologize for that. It's not showing me. So we have here... It's probably lagging. I'm sure it'll show me now. So we have here the ROA. It's gone up. ROE, it's gone up slightly. Earnings have gone up. Margins of debt has gone up as well. Way too much from what I've seen compared to other companies. Usually I see them around uh, the high 80s, low 90s. 91, yeah, 
92 and 93% debt, I really don't see too much. So we can see here 93% debt. That's really pushing the limit. Revenue is still not showing me, but the net income has gone up. So you can see here they're very, very high in debt. Uh, not even sustainable. Cash flow, I, again, for these companies, I'm not recommending them. Uh, I'm not saying they're good or they're bad. I just want to see if they'll survive. Again, repeating the, the situation because a lot of banks are nervous and stuff. So for the cash flow, we want to see that. Oh, they have negative cash flow. They're definitely in the hole. Uh, I definitely stay away from this bank. Definitely. Uh, negative cash flow. And even their net income doesn't even cover their cash flow. So, I just don't get it. How is a company so much in debt that they're still able to survive and stuff? This company is like over $6 billion in debt. Um, that's not even sustainable. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's even more than the damn market cap. That's just unbelievable. Look, look how fast that number dropped. Look how fast that number dropped. Uh, just like I said, market's open. It is 931. And uh, a lot of these companies are dropping. Uh, before we go to the next stock, let's see what's going on here. So you look at this drop here. Close to 1% drops already. So we have a high majority of companies selling off from the Silicon Valley Bank news so moving on to the next stock is isbc will this company survive uh and again anybody can try to bail this company this company out but throwing money at the situation all of a sudden when it's already creating nervousness for other banks when they know they're not stable as well, I mean, you're just accumulating debt. Like I said, if if there is a bailout, if there's even more borrowing um, from, from more companies that are borrowing, basically, the more chance of a depression we will be in. Uh, and again, I hate to say this, but um, aside from the depression... Uh, we might look at inflation, and on top of that, the federal government has even mentioned it might even take a decade just to pay a third of this debt off. So if it only takes 10 years to pay off a third of the debt, uh, then what's going to happen a decade after that? So I hate to say it, but we're looking at a decade of very tough financial strains uh, overall across the board for any company, for any market, even around the world. So just wanted to throw that out there. So for this next stock, it's not even giving me any volume. ISBC is the ticker symbol. Market cap 3.45. Uh, is this even trading? Give me some numbers here. It's not giving me any volume, no high or low. Uh, but the 52 week high and low, very, very awful. Not even a $10 limit. Uh, earnings per share. Uh, dividends, PE is at 10. Uh, looking at the chart, I just, I, I don't see it. I don't see this company doing well at all. I don't even think I have to look at the rest of this information here. Uh, yeah, this this company, this bank is uh, pretty awful.
as well. A New Jersey Chartered Commercial Bank. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, market cap 3.45. And definitely do not add to the watch list. So, again, those past three companies that we reviewed, don't even add them to the watch list. Next symbol up is ING. You can see this pretty quick drop. Look at that big drop. Uh, I'll zoom it in for you guys so that way you can see. If this is not a noticeable drop, I don't know what is. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just, look how long this drop is compared to all these little uh, movements on the one year chart. That is definitely a noticeable drop. And it's only going to drop even further. Like I said earlier, uh, I'm expecting these big drops. Just like in 2020, like that. It's just only a matter of time. This company, $45 billion company, ING. I've never even heard of this company. It's only at $12.30. So, 52-week high and low. High of close to $15, low of $8. Uh, it doesn't seem like Wall Street even likes it. At all. I mean, it hasn't gained any capital appreciation at all. The charts have even stayed flat. Uh, the highest was 14. Never broke out of that 14 range. And then uh, you can see here. These drops and these whipsaws here, and uh, it's pretty much headed to its 2020 highs, which is about $10 and change. And then uh, on top of that, we're going to look at the analysis here. So for that, we have uh, highest number. Well, they're actually pretty close with quality and momentum. Momentum, I see definitely the momentum going down, which is obvious. And then we have the quality. I'm not sure about the quality. Again, I'm all, uh, every time I review a company, I'm always unsure about the quality. Because, yes, the numbers support it uh, for the most part. But I would actually have to see the website, uh, see what customers say about this, the company or about certain things, what they like and what they don't like. And that would require further research. But for the most part, based on numbers... Uh, the numbers support it, and usually the numbers do catch up with it being for what it really is. Even though Wall Street likes to, you know, pick and choose their favorites, you know, in the long run, the numbers will prove to everyone in the long run, and they will sure enough show regardless of what other people think. It's just a matter of management from the company. So ING, again, um, it's, it's just weird. Like, a company with a $45 billion evaluation, uh, but it hasn't gained capital appreciation within the last five years. Um, let me check something real quick. I'm going to check if this company, sorry. I just want to check. Yeah, I knew it. it. It's not a, it's not an American. I knew it. Cause I'm like, I never heard of this company. So it is in the Netherlands. That's why. So again, none of these companies are to be added to watch list. I actually use this bank TFC, Truist financial you can see this big drop uh i use it as a customer but i'm not invested into this company you can see 20 percent these are insane numbers guys like this is history in the making today uh what is today's date so march 13th 2023 Two years ago, around this time, exactly almost two years ago, we had the pandemic. Uh, now we're actually looking at 
pretty much the reverse Uno card. Uh, China's reopening. We're doing bad. Um, we're not closing our economy. But again, China's playing the reverse Uno card. And China's putting pressure. So we're sitting at the table. Four people. You know, you have U.S., China, Russia, and Ukraine. You already know who the partners are on this table. We have the U.S. with Ukraine, and then you have China with uh, Russia. Even though they're not stating they're fully aligned, but we all know behind the scenes, uh, when they take a break, they're partners behind the scenes. So China is pretty much playing the reverse Uno card here. And they're looking to grow and expand and, and put their pieces in the right places. And um, they couldn't have even done this at a better time, trying to put pressure on the U.S. economy. Uh, these are insane numbers to drop. And then from bank to bank to bank. So again, um, you can't expect another $30 trillion of bailouts. And that'll definitely put a checkmate on the table from China given to the U.S., putting the U.S. in a checkmate position if, you know, all these banks start to fail and then people want to buy out, meaning companies, you know, J.P. Morgan or these other big companies and then um, everybody else involved with the government and these uh, billionaire superstars here putting their money in their capital investments. But anyways, for sure, for anything that happens, there's always going to be winners and losers. Whether it's people, companies, or in the markets, there's always going to be winners and losers. So anyways, moving on from that, I thought I'd share some news as I'm reviewing this. Because this is live. Uh, the, the markets are open as of right now. It is 9.42 a.m. So anyhow, 52-week high and low for this company, 61 high, 30 low. Uh, dividend of $2, earnings per share is at 4.4. I would have liked to see the earnings a little bit more. Market cap is at $41 billion. So this is not a small bank, guys. I, I'm actually a customer of this bank. I haven't had any issues. Uh, I haven't had any hacking or anything, so... Um, I'm not saying they're the best, but they're not the worst. I'm just fine being a customer with this company. So with the chart, again, last five days, big drops. Look at that drop. What does that what does this drop resemble? What does this look like? Just like the ones from 2020. And again, we're not in a pandemic, but with the news and everything coming to an end. Uh, things are really going to get tough. That's why I mentioned uh, I'm going to release the portfolio in June because June is actually the date in which the federal government has to make a decision what do they want to do with the debt. So regardless of what they decide, we're going to be in a bad spot anyway. So, oh, wow, they voted for... 8% on a sell, 58% hold. But the majority of Wall Street analysts like this stock. Uh, but it's not 100%. So, will this company survive? I think yes. I wouldn't add it to a watch list. Uh, highest rating is income. Um, I'm surprised by that. I would have I expected... Um, even before looking at this, not even looking at this, I would have would have expected the value to be better and the quality to be better. But uh, they seem to be doing okay. Earnings have even been downgraded. So we're going to look at some financials here, financial information. Uh, it's lagging. Uh, it's not showing up. I got to close it again and open it. I apologize. And thank you guys for waiting. Now we can look over it again. So we have here uh, ROA 1.1 has grown. 
So ROA stayed about the same. Earnings slightly grew. Net margins. Debt is at 89%. Slightly grew from the last five years. So it's not too bad. Net income at $6.27 billion. Again, it's not showing me revenue. For some reason, even for this past year, it hasn't shown me revenue. Uh, they have to update this app. I have most of the information. I have like 85% of the information I need, but uh, that other 15, 10 to 15%, I don't even have. Uh, we have here cash flow, uh, negative 29, so 20. I just add that all up, and I just do a rough guesstimate. So we have, let me see. So they're pretty much breaking even on their cash flow. And they're just down to their net income, which is a little over $6 billion. So this company will do fine. Again, I would not add to the watch list as of yet. Uh, just want to see how far this company would go down. So we have here. The one-year chart, and boom, look at that drop. want to see, before we go, I will show you what is going on in the markets as of right now. Uh, we have here, overall, the mega cap companies. Look at these drops. Look at these drops. Uh, everybody's dropping. A lot of people are dropping. So a financial scare. Which is good. I love I love financial scares. You can see here uh, Nasdaq going down, obviously, from the bank. S and P five hundred going down. Dow Jones doing pretty good actually. Not too bad. Uh, the first hour is always the most crucial hour, so we still have until ten thirty to see what happens. So we're looking at another forty five minutes to consolidation and see what happens in the markets. So the decline is 4,000, close to 5,000, still a little over 1,000 on the bullish companies as of right now, since the market is live. So anyhow, out of the five companies, uh, I think these will fail. I think this one will do just fine. And that's all I have for you guys today. So thank you guys for watching. I'll make a shorter video. And... I'll see you guys either later today or this week, and I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.